Rivers. And if you find you're tuning into a wave, well then I don't know much about the NSA. Hello, everybody. Hello, friends. Hello. Welcome into another episode of Spiritual Philosophy Chatter where the Jones is. I'm Danny Jones. And I am Samantha Jones. And here we are, episode 39. 39. What is this one? This is the Winchester Mystery House. Yes. Yes. Very cool place. It was very cool. We didn't know we were last, well, last week at this time, we had no idea we were going to be doing this episode this week. That's true. Yes. So it's kind of an interesting story. Yeah. Well, I can't wait to talk about it. Me either. But before we do, anything uh, from last week? Yes, actually. Well, this isn't so much from last week, but I wanted to read this. Um, my friend Lexi sent this okay. the other day. She said, on my prayer walk with Delta, that's her dog, I finished the Be Kind episode. I've been using these morning walks to talk to God and listen. When Danny said, take a person in a ma- managerial position, I was like, oh, yeah, spirit is talking to me. And he mm-hmm. says... And they have a person above them breathing down their neck saying, this needs to get done. And I'm like, yep, this is my message. My main goal in 2020 is to be in my purpose and do what serves my purpose. And part of it is managing the yoga studio. And I need to be a good manager. And through grace and kindness, I can be a good manager and get things done with the help of my staff. Praise up and thank you, Spiritual Joneses. Nice. That's cool, Lexi. Yeah, right thanks, Lexi. She's really going through uh, spiritual <coughs> awakening herself, and wow. it's interesting to watch the process um, that she's going through. It's a lot different from mine. Right. But, yeah. Cool. It's really cool. Yeah. Good for her. So thanks again, Lexi. That was sweet. Nice. Yeah. And then the other thing that I wanted to mention before we get into this episode is that I have set my next medium circle. Very cool. Yes, and that's going to be February 8th at 1 p.m. It is at um, Hot Yoga Haven in New Hall, California. So if you're in the area and you would like to come to that, you can give them a call to set up a reservation because it is um, limited seating. So their number is 661 255-1500 and you just call them and tell them that you want to come to the circle and they'll get you set up cool yeah i'm excited i'm too i'm looking forward to it in a while can i get in for free well yeah duh (laughs) (laughs) i'm charging you (laughs) it's 30 dollars by the way sorry i didn't mention that but yeah 30 dollars but worth it yes because she's good yeah everybody gets a reading it's guaranteed that's why it's uh limited seating so everybody gets a chance right i do whatever you i mean as long as something comes in for you on the other side but i would imagine whoever's there would well yeah and if it doesn't come in like if i'm not getting a spirit you know they can show me pictures or if they have animals but i'll get something even for them oh yeah yeah i'm not worried awesome everybody will get a reading be cool yeah sure so that's what i got awesome yeah all right, well, how about we jump into episode 39? 39. The Winchester Mystery House. Yeah. So, Why is it a mystery? Let's find that it's out. It's a huge mystery. Yeah. And this has been a really cool kind of process for me because when we decided to go up to San Francisco, we thought along the way we'll make a stop at this Winchester Mystery House. I honestly had never heard about it. Well, I can't say that. I had heard about it recently on Facebook from friends that had gone. I saw pictures, but that's really all I knew. I had no idea what it was about. But for you, it was something that was like on your bucket list. Always wanted to go there. Yeah. So I just we decided we're going to stop. And I honestly didn't know much about it. We wanted to let Marina know what we were doing. And so we read her what was on the website, which is what I'm going to read now so that you guys can hear what we heard. But this is all that I knew going into this experience, okay? So it says, this is straight off their website. The Winchester Mystery House is an architectural wonder and historic landmark in San Jose, California, that was once the personal residence of Sarah Lockwood Pardee Winchester, the widow of William Winchester and heiress to a large portion of the Winchester repeating arms fortune. Tragedy befell Sarah. Her infant daughter died of a childhood illness, and a few years later, her husband was taken from her by tuberculosis. Shortly after her husband's death, Sarah left their home in New Haven, Connecticut, and moved out west to San Jose. 
There she bought an eight-room farmhouse and began what could only be described at, as the world's longest home renovation, stopping only when Sarah passed on September 5, 1922. Some facts about it. It's 24,000 square feet. It has 10,000 windows, 2,000 doors, 160 rooms, 52 skylights, 47 staircases and fireplaces, 17 chimneys, 13 bathrooms, 6 kitchens, and it was built at the price tag of what would be today about $70 million. Yeah. Crazy. So this is a little bit more about what, what they say online. What remained is indeed a mystery. Even before her passing, rumors <clears throat> of a mystery house being built by an eccentric and wealthy woman swirled. Was she instructed to build this home by a psychic? Was she haunted by ghosts that those of those felled by the gun that won the West? Talking about the gun she was the heiress to. Yes. <clears throat> Did construction truly never stop? What motivated a well-educated socialite to cut herself off from the rest of the world and focus a along solely on building the world's most beautiful yet bizarre mansion. So that's all that I knew. But I didn't go there expecting to talk to spirits right. or anything like that. Right. I just went to see this house that I knew had mystery doors. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and um gosh, I don't even know how to start with our experience there, but it was very cool. I don't know what I expected. I guess after the Pierpont Inn, <clears throat> I was sort of like, hmm, maybe, you know. Yeah, maybe I assume I you're connection. always going to get yeah. something from somebody. But I, Me too. I guess I just don't, <clears throat> I don't expect it. I don't like go in with any expectation that that's what's going to happen. Right. And because I think that if I build myself up and I'm like, oh, something's right. coming, that it will maybe shut me down a little bit, you know? Two interesting things about that, though, is that the Pierpont in and um, her house, Mrs. Winchester's house, are relatively about the same time, same era. Yes. And both women, both not builders themselves, but in charge of. Yeah. It's interesting. It's very interesting. Yeah. Correlation. Definitely. I don't know what it, if it means anything, but that just dawned on me. Yeah. Yeah. That's a very good correlation. <clears throat> I never thought about that. So when we started our tour, you have a tour guide at the Winchester Mansion, and the tour guide, he was really sweet. He, yeah. he You could tell he absolutely loves his job. Yes. Okay. So Steven. Steven, yes. Uh, Steven. Thank you, Steven. It yes. was very good. Yes, thank you, because I, I would like to send them this, so maybe they'll have a listen. Yeah. So, yes, thank you, Steven. You were a fantastic tour guide. <laughs> So at first, um, in the in the front room, they kind of give you a breakdown a little bit of, of what you're going into, you know, tell you the rules. And then from there, they take you into a room that has um, windows. Um, what do you call those types of windows? That she well, they liked. started with where she used to wheel her carriage in. Yes. Yeah. When And that's where he gave the breakdown of like, yeah. you know, what we were going to be seeing yes so but then we got to the room with stained glass windows mm -hmm. that's what it was and they show you a video in there and so i was just watching the video and this picture comes up of sarah and i hear i don't look anything like that or something along those lines doesn't look anything like me but <laughs> not like how you would talk today you could tell it was more like proper so i knew yeah. immediately i'm like okay this is her you know i could just start to feel her presence and she started talking about this tour guide and how he was her favorite and i think it was arranged for us to have her favorite but cool. he was getting ahead of himself like when he would talk it was like he i don't know how to explain it he wasn't finishing words before the next ones were coming he was very out excited yeah and passionate about about it you could tell and and that made me feel good not just for the money you spend on something like that but something that's so historical that was built so well that's still standing there yeah and so misunderstood it's very misunderstood because there are there's no proof of anything really and we'll right. get into that right. yeah 
So anyway, she was talking to me and we're watching this video and she was telling me that Steven's her favorite and that um, he gets ahead of himself. And I hadn't noticed the getting ahead of himself yet. I did immediately. Did you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I didn't. Um, and then when she pointed out, I was like, oh, thanks. You know, then it, then the rest of the time you hear it. Mm-hmm. But it was interesting because I'm pretty sure that Steven knew that I was a medium. Yeah, I could just tell there was like this connection almost that he just knew right i'm sure he's done that job for a long time he's very passionate about it i'm sure he sees it all he the did time say something in regards to like if if there is a if there is about one particular person that has been spotted there by yeah one employees, of the employees mm-hmm. and he said if they are here around i don't want to know yeah i don't want to see it <laughs> so i don't know if he was talking to you or yeah just uh, we can, saying that out loud because it is funny because when he said that, I was actually, he had said that he was kind of scared about that. I thought about saying to him, don't be scared. Oh, don't just, be scared. No, don't be scared. There's yeah. nothing to be scared of. Just They're Sarah. not going to hurt you. Sarah ain't going to hurt you. But I didn't. I After he said that, I'm like, he doesn't want, I don't want him to quit his job. Yeah. Anyway, so we go on the tour of this home and I don't even know how to describe it. It was fascinating. But for me, let me explain a little bit about how my abilities work. And I'm assuming this is just in general. I like to come into a situation without knowing anything. When I do a reading, I want you to show me a picture of the person or animal, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Give me their name. I don't want to know anything else. Don't fill my head full of information because it throws me off. Mm -hmm. So it's that's what it's like for me going to a place like Winchester, is that I didn't have a lot of info, but I had enough. It was right. enough to taint me. Right. So I'm walking through this house, and I'm trying to listen to what Stephen's saying, all the while kind of trying to listen to if she's coming back in and what she wants to say, and trying to form my own opinion. And that's really, really hard to do when you have a tour guide telling you that the things he's telling you are fact. Right. Okay. And they're really not. They're not fact. The you know they not don't know. All of it. No. So anyway, so we go on the tour of the house, and it was it was absolutely amazing. It's definitely worth seeing. There's there are staircases that lead to nowhere. There is a door that they, it leads to nowhere. You open it, and if you walk out, you're falling straight down. Yeah, strange zigzag stairs um, with very low stair height, which they get into explaining, but. Um, Again, I think for a lot of people, it was misunderstood because yeah. they didn't know the history of it. It feels when you walk in there, it feels like a fun house, kind of. It does. Because she had really bad arthritis, mm-hmm. and so she had stairs and things specially made for her. She was also um, four feet ten. Yes. So very, very short. So since this house was built by her, or not you know, with her hands, but mm-hmm. she was like one of the the designers on it it was designed for her height so the doors are pretty you know you walk through them I, perfect for me i'm five feet tall <laughs> that was great but for a tall person you know yeah, it was low yeah i'm sure it felt like a fun house with that as well i think even some of like the countertops and things were low f- felt yes lower. exactly yeah <clears throat> this home was very very detailed uh th- beautiful like yes craftsman beautiful yes the, this woman was extremely wealthy. Okay, she could have anything that she wanted, buy mm-hmm. anything she wanted, do anything she wanted. Right. This gun kind of made its premiere. the The Winchester rifle made its premiere in the Civil War, I believe, is what they said. I believe so. So, and then after that, they it's that's why it's called the gun that won the West. Right. Essentially, is what it's revered as, and so the amount of money that that family made and that she was heir to just by being married to yes her husband <clears throat> was a lot a ton of money right so uh, let's talk a little bit about the story that they tell you when you're on the tour when you're on, on the tour they basically tell you that she she's from Connecticut New Haven Connecticut she had a daughter uh, and that daughter was born with a rare disease which is true um the daughter couldn't absorb nutrition right. so i believe it was within a couple of weeks that the <clears throat> daughter passed away right and then they say on the website a few years later but it was actually 15 years later that her husband died and he was um, the heir to the Winchester rifle, but because he died, she was next in line. So she took that money, and it was a lot of money. Right. A lot of money. Doesn't bring back her husband, though. No. 
Story goes that she went to a medium and that medium contacted her husband and her husband said that she should move out west because spirits of this um, people that were killed by this revolver. Right. It was a revolver. Yes. Yeah. Um, no, it was a rifle. No, was a rifle. Um, people that were killed by this rifle, their spirits were haunting her and that right. she should get out west. That's how the story goes. Mm -hmm. So she moves out to California and she buys this farmhouse and she starts building, right? They tell you that she just keeps building and building Mm -hmm. and building and she's hiring, you know, all these people to do what she's seeing in magazines from like the other side. She's buying lots that are opening up next to her Mm. to make the house even larger. Right. So. And they really kind of push into you that she was a recluse, Mm. which she was. She was very, very much an introvert. She was very afraid, I think, of having relationships, deep relationships with people because she had lost people before. But they make it out to sound like she went crazy. And maybe she did. But so she moves out to California. This is a story again. She moves out to California because the psychic tells her to, right? But... The, there's no proof of any of this that any of this ever happened. The psychic. Part. Yes, there's no, there's nothing. This is something that they believe was made up by um, a newspaper or whatever. So you're going along on this tour, which is wonderful, but they're filling your head full of this stuff that they're not really even sure. Right. They kind of add a little Hollywood flair to it. They add a lot of Hollywood flair to it, yeah. which you know it sells. Mm-hmm. Um. Sarah was not with me the entire time of this tour. I, you know, I looked around. I got to enjoy it myself. Right. There were a couple of other spots that she did stand out and a couple of important key parts of this story. Mm-hmm. She lived in this this house during the San Francisco earthquake in 1906. Mm-hmm. They took us into this room that she was staying in that because she moved into different rooms. She didn't sleep in the same room or so they said. Yeah. Um, and this was the room that she was in when the earthquake hit and the earthquake took out the whole side of the room. Like the, how would you even describe that? It was like the, like a because the fireplace room. was so heavy and it shook that the whole chimney that went up the wall, I think supplied like two or three fireplaces up that front. Yeah. It was very kind of tower heavy that it just crumbled and all fell. Yeah. And it, like from the outside, because they left it, they didn't repair it right. from the outside. It reminds me of like Rapunzel's castle. Yeah, it's it does. All like vines have built into yeah. it now. And it has like that round towerish kind of look. Yeah, I think. Yeah. So while you're in that room, they play the, like the sound of what an earthquake sounds like if you're in it and it's, you know, getting louder and louder. Right. And I hear her telling me that it was the scariest day of her life, that she really did believe. And I, I believe this, that spirits were coming for her at that point Wow! because she didn't know really what it was. She well, we'll get into it a little later, but. They, they don't even know that she was really at this house when the earthquake happened. But before the earthquake happened, <clears throat> she had built, and they don't talk about this there much, she built an ark, an actual ark. It's a replica of Burnt Now, but it was a replica of Noah's Ark. Wow. Yeah. Um, and it was like a houseboat off the coast of San Francisco. So wow. she built that before the earthquake even hit. So she had like a premonition or something. You I know. think she was connected. She was. She was connected, yeah. So the, one of the other um, big rooms that they take you to in here is the seance room. And that was a really interesting mm-hmm. thing for me because, I again, I'm listening to what the tour guide is saying. And for me, it's not adding up. But I want to believe what he's saying. I want to know what actually happened here. Right. You know what I mean? So their side of it is that she would do a seance in this room every night. From 12 12 a.m. to to 2 a.m. Yeah. And she would lock the doors. Nobody was allowed in there. There was a closet that had robes in it. And but nobody was ever allowed in there. There were bars in the windows. Yeah. The closet was like the secret passageway. Yeah. Into that room. Yes. It was definitely a very interesting room. Mm hmm. Um, so in there, I was like really trying to figure out what happened in this room. What because they're making it sound like she was trying to keep spirits in 
or whatever it was. That part didn't make sense to me. If no. you're scared of them, why are you trying to keep them in? Right, exactly. For two hours. It, yeah, it didn't really make any sense. Now, some of this is testimony from people that worked with her, I'm assuming, is where they say they get some of this information. Well, let me tell you what I did this week. I <clears throat> I wanted to know facts, like what you're asking. Mm-hmm. I wanted to know what is really known, not from Winchester's standpoint. I want to know what's real. So I found a book. Um, oh, gosh, I have to find it so that I can give credit. But... um. It was written about Sarah's life. And the information in this is from actual documents that they have found Mm -hmm. from um, interviews with people that worked for her and different things like that. It's all done off of fact. Right. So good. Yeah. So for the last three days that I've been listening to that. Okay. So get into that. Is there anything else about the tour that you can think of that we should fill our listeners in? Um, no, I mean, you have to understand, I think this was because she was always building and the kind of money that she had. I mean, they estimated that she was bringing home $26,000 a day. Yes. Then. 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 That's a lot of money. $26,000 a day. Yeah. She paid all of her workers twice the going rate. Yes. And they said she was very sweet, very, very sweet to yes. the people that worked around her because I think partly because she was reclusive and she didn't have family. Right. She had one niece around her, I think, that was around her till she passed. Right. Um, that lived with her for about 15 years. And but so she treated everybody really well, paid everybody really well. Right. <clears throat> I thought maybe part of the reason that she didn't go out. A lot is not only because of her health and and you mentioned that she had really bad teeth that she yes. was embarrassed about. She used to wear a veil. Yes. Um, and everybody thought that that was mourning her, her husband. Yes. That she was always wearing black and a veil. I think it was more insecurity about her look. Right. And then she also is getting older, is, you know, a handicap and it's getting harder to go out. Yes. But... I thought maybe she might actually be afraid of threats or being mocked, be like, oh, you're the one that owns all those guns that killed everybody in the Civil War and then then some after. Yes. I think she dealt with a lot. Yeah. She had a really, really rough life. Yeah. And so she dealt with it the best way that she knew how. Yeah. So – um. First, let me tell you that this book that I I read is Captive of the Labyrinth by Mary Jo Ignafo. And it definitely, I listened to it on Audible. It was a great listen. uh, And I really got some good information from it. So I want to like start with a little bit of what they, they said in the book compared to what they say in the house. Okay. First of all, one thing that I didn't mention before is that they say she was obsessed with the number 13. Mm-hmm. Everything they t- tell you in the house is that it's 13, this 13, that everything's the number 13 for me. It's one of my numbers. So I was like instantly connected on it. Right. But if you remember, <clears throat> I said to you, I'm just not <clears throat> getting why, what is the 13 significance? What is it about? I was trying to figure it out. So listening to this book and doing a little bit other research online, um, that's a part of the the amusement of it. They did that. The people that own Winchester House now, they did that. They added the 13th. The 13th. But only partially. She was really big into synchronicity mm-hmm. and into numerology. I truly do believe that she herself was a medium. Uh, that she built those abilities herself after her husband died. Yeah, I think she, I think she was. Yes, and I think that that may be a part of that room too that they were talking about. Not necessarily a séance room, but maybe a meditation room. Mm-hmm. Anyways, so they talk about the thirteens, and according to the book and the other research that I've done, that is not true. Um, and I was not getting anything off of the thirteen either. When I go in and try and ask her that question, there was nothing. Right. So. I take it, and from from the other things, that it was all about her numerology and synchronicity. She liked 13 of this. She liked 52 of this. She liked 
um, different numbers, so seven, in essence, just seven, kind of 11, lucky yeah. number. It, it, it was in a way. lucky numbers, but yeah. everything added up. It was like the numerology part. Mm-hmm. So there is like a partial truth to that. But right. I think they took the 13 and like exaggerated it because that's an unlucky number. Like, Again, Hollywood flair. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> so <clears throat> when they talk about things like her seeing the psychic in New Haven, um, there's no proof of that. Uh, this is things that have kind of shown up in newspaper articles and then they kind of run with it. Now, where the source was of this, maybe there wasn't one, maybe it was just created. Right. Or maybe somebody talked. Maybe somebody, you know, said something that worked for her. I do believe that she saw this medium. I do believe he connected to her husband and that she was told to get away from the area because she was there were spirits that were following her. And she did. Yes. In the folklore of it, they tell you that this medium told her to go and build this house and make spirits crazy so that they can't get to her to hurt her. And that I don't believe that that's what happened at all. Um, I believe that she was a brilliant woman. Yeah. She was a genius and she, she I think actually it's was. kind of a <clears throat> I think it's sort of a shrine to, or um a monument to her loved ones who who passed. Like, okay, I'm getting twenty six thousand right. dollars a day in nineteen oh six. What do you do with that kind of money when you're all by yourself? Right. Well ha- how about this? And you said that you read this was that it was something that she even thought people would want to come see much yes much after she's gone yes and i've i've expanded on that with this reading i've done a lot more meditating on this and kind of getting into to that part a little bit Mm -hmm. absolutely um of it but a couple of reasons like okay first of all what you were saying about um her being reclusive and being alone. She wasn't alone. She had a lot of people people. that worked for her, but her niece also lived there. Mm -hmm. So she wasn't alone. She traveled a lot. The thing was, is like, I, you know, to be honest, I don't blame her for any of what she did. She stayed to herself. Mm -hmm. She, she went out, but when she went out, she was very, she like a celebrity. She was very slick about it. Nobody really saw her moving about, but she had homes all over the place, different properties everywhere, and she was traveling all over the place. Nobody knew that. She didn't talk. She was a smart businesswoman. Yes. She just, that's how, and she was private. Yes, absolutely. And so as far as the house goes, um, I think that happened for a lot of reasons, but I don't think that it had anything to do with the spirit like her trying to get away from the spirits. Okay. Few reasons why I think that she did it. First of all, was boredom needing something to do. She had all that money, so she didn't have to really work or anything. She was also really good at investing. So on top of that money that you were talking about, she was also getting more investments. Right. So she was And designing. She was designing. She was very, she very loved creative. To design. And she did. in in what's the word I'm looking for? inventive yes very so when i try and piece this together for me i feel like she did that because that's what she wanted she wanted to build this house she wanted to to be elaborate with it and do you know she didn't want to build outside she wanted to see it be done she wanted to be a part of it and involved in it and enjoy it and be creative Mm -hmm. so things like like I've really been doing my research on this, trying to find a picture. Let's let's say that door that goes to nowhere. Okay, mm-hmm. um, there is no picture pre earthquake of that door. There's no picture pre earthquake of that area. I've searched and I've searched and I've searched. So we have no idea if there was anything actually there right. that may have fallen, leaving that door there. I'm not. Trying to be negative and like say that this was later. it, yeah, right. But the thing possible, it, yeah, because it was it was abandoned and was um, up for sale. Nobody wanted to buy it because the earthquake uh, 
safety yeah. of it and nobody knew how to go about trying to make that, you know, safe right. for people. Then some, I don't forget, I forget who the company was, but some company came in, purchased it. Yeah. For a hundred and like thirty thousand dollars in auction. Yeah, it was practically nothing, and within days they had turned it into an amusement so, park slash yeah. haunted house. It used to be a, um, self-guided with like footprints through it, and it got really jacked up and yeah. damaged a lot by people. Yeah. Um, but you might be right. That could have been added, you know, to sort of their repertoire of the Hollywood flair later on. Another point they make in the tour is that. The front door, which was very beautiful entrance to the the whole house, the front porch and everything, but that the only three people that ever walked through that front door was Sarah and the two guys that installed it. Well, how could they really know that with with 60-something? Didn't she have like 60-something workers? Right. And she had all these entrances and doors and everything. That's a little bit like, come on. A lot of it, (laughs) yeah, it's absolutely, it's created. Yeah. Um, Something else that they tell you, and I read that, um, was that the construction didn't stop until the day she died in 1922. They tell you that in the tour so many times. Right. That is not true. Construction stopped on that house after the San Francisco earthquake. All they did was repair and like she had a seven, what was it? Seven story tower and it collapsed. So they took that down and put it back to be, I think it was like three stories. Um, So then they just did repairs on that. So hear me out here. One of the first things I remember seeing on that tour was the staircase to nowhere. Mm hmm. It wasn't a staircase to nowhere. That was the tower. It was, I don't know if it was the tower. Something damaged and they just. It was something damaged in the earthquake. So they capped it off. Yeah. But here's the thing about about Sarah and this this whole story is that nobody knew. Mm -hmm. And the people that knew weren't talking. Sarah was a very, very private person. Right. When there were things written about her, she took it very personally, but she didn't come out and say anything about this is wrong, you know, right. that's wrong, this is wrong, this is the fact. She never said anything. She so didn't people, respond. Yeah. So people just assumed that she was crazy and that she was building right. this home to ward off evil spirits when all along this woman was building this amazing home that unfortunately just took a giant hit in the San Francisco yeah. earthquake. And then... I mean, this thing is gorgeous. I mean, for the time that it was built in, she used, like, top-notch, like, some of her tiling, like, ceiling tiling was, like, fabric. It was just exquisite, but, like, um, embossed fabric. So it was, it had texture and shape to it, kind of, you know? Right. But, yeah, I mean, she was an amazing designer, they don't make houses like this no. anymore. She had an amazing stained glass window collection. Mm-hmm. There was one, oh my gosh, I, I'll have to put a picture up of it. I can't remember how much they said it was. They said it was the most expensive thing in the house. Yes, it was like it had pieces of silver and gold and it was just absolutely Which beautiful. Which had 13 or so they say. Circles in it. Right. So they say Again, yeah. these are these are things that I don't know anymore. Well, it may not. It may have. I, I didn't count right. them, sit there and count them, but I took a picture of it. I should yeah. count them. Well, but, like in the book that I was reading, they said, remember, there was a chandelier that yeah. it had. It came to her with 12. That was a little shady. Okay, but listen to how the book explains it. Okay, so there's a chandelier that has 12 bulbs on it. And they say that she wanted it to have 13, so they added a 13. Okay, this woman had all the money you could imagine, but the work done on that chandelier looks like it was done by a child. Yeah. It's like they just took an extra bulb and placed it on the top. And if she had actually done that, wanted 13, she would have had one specially made exactly. with 13 on it. These yes. are the types of things that they don't think that we think about. And you know what? I didn't. When I was in the tour, mm-hmm. I'm like, this is so cool. But also knowing that there's no way mm-hmm. that this was actually what happened. Right. This, th- th- no. Sorry. So Yeah, it looked like they had, you know, their handyman get up on a ladder. <laughs> 
Yeah, exactly. And just screw that in there for, again, the story, the flair. Exactly. Um, You had mentioned about that I had mentioned to you that she knew that this house was going to become an attraction. So the way that I feel about this is not that she built this house and did strange things in it to make it a fun house. I really believe that she wanted to show off her design abilities. Yeah, because it was phenomenal. It really was. And some things, of the things that she used. Yeah. Um, like uh, she had a sauna, mm-hmm. which was created by a, a hot water heater tank, right. and um, four fireplaces within a close proximity, different rooms. Yes. But she'd stand in the center, and she. Any condensation in that air, in that room had like metal floors underneath it, yeah. so any condensation would like run. Mm. She had atrium rooms that were built that way. Yes, glass, you know, skylights and full walls of glass and sloped metal floors, so that they didn't have to um, move as many plants. And they could just take them out, sit right. them on the ground, which was metal, and it was had a drain. Right. They had an elevator. She used. Um, a bell service. Yes. That was very a talk advanced. service throughout mm-hmm. the whole house. You could talk through a tube and, yep. it, used, and it worked. Um, she had a, like a dummy elevator for room service that would tell them exactly where, yep. what room she was in. It yep. was just wild. It was amazing. I really feel like she thought that this was going to be some kind of, I don't want to call it a museum, but like high tech, like, whoa, this is kind of the first we're seeing of a lot of these things, right. you know, that when she died, that it would be more like that. Um, I do, like I said, I do feel like she had the medium and the psychic abilities, the connection. Mm-hmm. So this is something that I believe that she was told that it was going to become a tourist attraction. Mm-hmm. When, for me, at least when I get messages for myself, a lot of times they will be very vague and I won't know details of them until later. And I feel like that's kind of what happened with Sarah was she didn't realize what kind of attraction it was going to be. Right, but her connection was telling her this is going it's to gonna, be something yes. significant. Mm-hmm. You know, yes. the connection to the other side, to the spirit. Yes. They're basically saying, yes, do this, you know. I think it more started as like, well, what am I going to do? I got this huge piece of land. Right. And I built this house, and uh-oh, I want to make it bigger. Like, I kind of want to honor my family yeah. and use the money that I have. And then that connection kicked in and was like, Yes, keep going because this is going to be bigger than you. Right. You know, it's going to go on for a long, long, long time, if not forever, you know. This woman was amazing. Like, I I don't really usually do this much research on a person. But so her husband died of tuberculosis. And through her entire life, she made very, very large donations to institutes that dealt with trying to find cures or or whatnot for tuberculosis. There was actually a center that was open in New Haven, Connecticut, where she was from, um, just for tuberculosis care. And she had donated, and it was all anonymous until after she died, um, over a million dollars. And in that time, yeah, that was some money. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It was very, very important to her um, because that's how she lost her husband. You know, um, what did they say she put into that house all together about five million, I which think today's so. standards was something of I think that was what I read in there. It said like 70 million. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. I, I really I want to make you guys understand that I'm not saying the house isn't haunted, quote unquote. I'm not saying that you shouldn't go there and enjoy it and learn about Sarah and you might feel spirit and, exp- you know, spirits or, or whatever. Mm hmm. But I don't think people understand what the word haunting or haunted means. Exactly. All it means is that it's frequented by a spirit. Yeah. Which means everything right. is haunted. Right. Everything. There's this no room we're sitting in right now. Or yeah. devils or Right. It's just the presence of somebody's soul. Exactly. The spirits, they don't hurt you. I don't believe for a second that Sarah believed that any spirits were out to hurt her. Right. Um, and the spirits that are there now are not going to hurt anybody. No. Uh, something that I learned over that weekend away was why these spirits do this. Why they stay at a location. Why is Sarah staying at this location? First of all, she's not staying there. No. 
she when you die we all have our soul right but your soul is split mm -hmm. it you can be wherever you want you can be in as many places right. as you want and so i've learned that when there's a place like what Sarah had with Winchester, there is a piece of her soul always there. Mm -hmm. She wants to watch over her place. This was hers. You know, she's she's a spirit now. Right. Is she thrilled with what's been done to her place? Well, she's a spirit, so she doesn't look at it that way. No, and she intuitively knows, I think, especially people like yourself. Yes. That um, have that gift that she wants to be. Is she present there every moment, every second? I don't know. <clears throat> but I'll tell you, she definitely made it a point to be there that day for you, I think in particular, because you can help set and yes. other people like you can help set her story straight a little more. I I didn't even think about that going into it. And that's exactly what I think that they try to do is that they want you to know their side of the story because mm -hmm. nobody's telling their side of the story right. with these so-called hauntings. Right. You know, what What was wrong with Sarah? Well, there right. was nothing wrong with her. and She's proud of it. It's yeah. like it's as if she's sort of still standing there at the front door welcoming her guest in. You right. know, they said she never had a guest in that house I don't know That's how not they, true. I don't believe that. No, it's not true. They make all that up. <clears throat> she was very reclusive and didn't bring a lot of people into her home. Right. There were actually two presidents that visited the area, and they were usually hosted by wealthy families, and Sarah did not offer either time to host the president. She just wasn't into people right. for a few reasons, but I, I really don't blame her because when you have that kind of money, people talk about you like mm -hmm. and they want things from you. And, oh, yeah. you know, like there obviously wasn't paparazzi back then. But the way that I would kind of attribute how she makes me feel about it is like the National Enquirer. Like people there wasn't just... paparazzi, but with cameras, but there was definitely people that worked for papers yeah. that would write about that's you. exactly right and like today if we have a celebrity that's not really open about their life we try and figure out what it is that mm -hmm. that is weird and mm -hmm. until they come out and say no that's not true <laughs> right. we believe it but sarah never came out and said that none of this was true she just let everybody believe it right but she did have a lot of family around her she did have really great relationships with everybody that worked for her um, these people were given homes that worked for her. Um, they were they owned these homes. Mm -hmm. it, she was very, very generous. She left a lot of money to a lot of people. And when you worked for her, it was free room and board. So many people mm -hmm. would come and work for her for six months. Yes. Because they, they would come from back east to work for her for six months or whatever and go back home because they could make so much money working for her. Yeah. Absolutely. And she she liked to keep the circle small mm -hmm. because I feel like then if things did get out, she kind of knew who she was dealing with, right. you know. But I feel like people really looked up to her and they loved her and they didn't want to say things about her. But there wasn't really much bad to say about her. Right. You know, she just was When you think about it, eye, for whoever all. came up with this kind of kind of story, just like. Yeah. You know, Amityville Horror is a great example uh -huh. of, of admitted basically coming up with something. But when you think about it, whoever did come up with the story with the Winchester Mansion and Sarah was a perfect candidate because there is nothing public about any response to any of what her the claims would have been during right. her time, you know? There's so nothing. So they could have said, look, it adds more to the mystery because... Right. We have nothing, we can't find anything about this woman, you know, disputing or re rebuttaling to any of these claims ever. Right. Exactly. Well, a couple other things that that book noted, we had talked about the seance room mm -hmm. and that there was a closet that they told us had 13 hooks in it. And then there were robes that were hanging for each spirit that she tried to, like, I don't know, keep in the room or whatever, right. like each one she communicated with. <clears throat> Houdini is the one that said that. There was no proof that, that, that that's what that was for, that there that closet had robes in it or anything. Houdini made that up. About her? Uh-huh. He went out and did, like, this 
thing there. Um, I don't even know what it was. Some some Halloween thing. And it was just something that came out of his mouth. Was this much after she had... After she died, okay. yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. yeah, see, it's just... It's just stories. It's, it's absolutely just and stories. It doesn't get so. any more Hollywood than Houdini. Yeah. Um, the, a couple of things that Sarah told me about herself that I haven't really verified online, but I thought were interesting is that she did love to travel, which kind of is obvious, and she loved to read. She really was a genius. She read everything that she could get her hands on. Wow. Very, very smart woman. Spoke a lot of languages, yeah. She, I can't remember. I thought he said that. She did. She did. She spoke, I, like I want to say five or four six. Four or five something or something like, something like that. that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and something else that was pointed out, because I, like I said, I did other research as well. And you had said is that she does, and these other spirits, they do seek out mediums. If you're a medium and you go to these places, they seek you out. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I mean, like the reason I think that she sought you out or made sure she was going to be fully there and communicate with you was to set her story straight. Yes. Now, uh, the the lady, I forget her name, forgive me, miss. Oh, uh, Josephine Pierpont? Yes. Uh, yeah, Pierpont um, and Inventura. I don't feel like she had any really story to set straight. No. Other than she was just extremely proud of it. Yeah. And wanted... I guess us to know a couple things that a she's real. Yeah. It's true. She did all this mm-hmm. and B she's over there. See yeah. you when you get here. Exactly. <laughs> she was in and out very quick when that spirit came in. Yeah. Um, Sarah stayed with me off and on the entire time that we were there. One of the other times that she came in, um, I actually got emotional. And I get emotional now just thinking about it. Um, There was the dining room and they talked about how she would eat there every night by Mm -hmm. herself in that dining room. And then afterwards, she would come into the parlor and she would sit at this table in the parlor. And I saw her play this scene playing out. Mm -hmm. But the way that they made it sound was that she was so miserable. But this was her favorite part of the day. And I'm sitting here thinking, why am I so connected to this room? Why do I feel like I want to cry when they're telling me that this is a sad place? Mm -hmm. That was her favorite room in the house. She loved to have dinner in there and loved to come into the parlor. They had it all darkly lit, kind of. It was, they did that. She loved it. They did that on purpose. She would sit at that table and read her book and look outside and enjoy the fountains and the birds and everything. But they made it sound like she was so miserable. She wasn't miserable. No, I mean, was she sad because she lost? Her family, sure. Well, yeah, it, that messed with her. And right. and the earthquake did mess with her. Afterwards, she kind of, like, nobody heard anything about her for a long time. I can't remember. It was a few years. Mm-hmm. Um, and she said she had a mental breakdown right. after the earthquake. Oh, can you blame her? The whole city came apart. Right. I, I would have, too. But she pulled herself back together. And this is a woman that changed her will constantly to make sense. Mm -hmm. Everything that she did made sense. So these stories about that she did all of this building to appease spirits or keep them away, it's it's all folklore. Yeah. It's Uh, she's I would agree with that. She's definitely there and it's a beautiful place to visit. Right. But it's not what they make it out to be. No, yeah. I felt connected as immediately when I walked in there. You can feel, I don't, I want to use the word heavy, but I don't want people to think of it in a dark sense or a bad or a sad sense. I could feel the time. Mm -hmm. I could feel the history, the heaviness. I could feel all the souls that were, had been around there. Right. Or worked there, her. Um, Something interesting happened to me even on the way. Uh, as we were driving up before we even hit San Jose, I and I had said this to you that we were trading off driving, so I was kicking back when it was my turn to be in the passenger seat, and so I'm looking around and I'm I got this strange sense of this thought of imagine what this place looked like when there was no highway running through it and it was like Civil War time. Yeah. I had no idea that the Civil War or anything about this story with the Winchester house or mansion had anything to do with Civil War. Yeah. Um, And so that was the first thing that I was like, whoa, Mm -hmm. okay, 
I guess they're trying to get my attention, <laughs> you know, like, so then we go in and we're going through the tour and everything. And <clears throat> all these staircases have these little, I don't know what they're made out of, iron yeah. or nickel or something. I don't know. Very nice or, or ornamental looking craftsman style. But in the corners of all the stairs, they're screwed in and they're metal and they're just nice looking. You know, they didn't, and I have never seen him before. I hadn't either. And she, Samantha says to me, and the tour guide actually asks everybody at one point if anybody knows what those are for. Yeah. Samantha asked me about three minutes prior or a few minutes prior to him asking the crowd. Yeah. What are those for? And I just said straight out to keep the dust out of the corners. Yeah. Like he I'd knew. I'd never seen it. I didn't know. <laughs> and yeah. it was like. Where did then, that come and from? And then he yeah. asked, and I didn't answer mm-hmm. because I wanted to hear what his answer was. Not yeah. that it was that mind-boggling to look at and not figure out. Oh, I had no idea. But I responded so quickly, like I just knew. That's definitely brilliant. And I could yeah. feel that time. I, I was almost like there. Yeah. It was bizarre. Um, So that was another interesting little fact that kind yeah. of popped in during this trip about this particular subject. Yeah. No, that was really cool. It, and that's how the abilities work too is is sometimes that what is that is that the clairvoyance? One of those that is the knowing. And mm-hmm. you just you don't know how you know, but you're like, "Wait a minute. I've never seen this before in my life and right. I know what it is." Yeah. Yeah. That's and I think that when you're in a setting like that that you have those spirits and that energy there and you have me there that of course they're going to connect you and yeah. start, you know, working through you as well. Yeah. It was fabulous. It was yeah. a, a really amazing experience. And then obviously, you know, we took a lot of pictures. Yes. I was um, just going to talk about that. And when we got home or to back to our hotel where we were staying, um, you know, we're looking through all the pictures and, um, you know, ooh and an on at it. And something told me, very clearly, you need to zoom in on these. You need to start zooming in on these, which is exactly what I did with the pier pond pot, yep. photos that we took because there were some orb. Um, and yeah, you can get some refraction, light refraction yeah. going on with the iPhones that will create that. But there was one in particular that wasn't perfectly round. It was a very strange shape. And yep. so we you know, would screenshot it, zoom it in, screenshot it, zoom it in until finally you can see... Mrs. Pierpont in the sky. Yeah, exactly. You know? So same thing with this story um, with the Winchester. We're looking at the photos that night and start zooming in. And lo and behold, Samantha had taken one, you know, out looking out the front of the house in the front garden and start blowing it up. And you can see this kind of foggy kind of apparition. And, you know, I said, I see a a head right there and all of a sudden boom it was like i could as see it all you showed me yep it's the whole carriage you it can was, see both yep. wheels of the carriage her sitting in the carriage and then there's all these little maybe 10 orbs kind of oh, bouncing around this yeah. sort of apparition um it was but then so on top clear. of that you start zooming in in other sections mm-hmm. and her dot do- it's either i'm assuming it's her daughter or it's the niece it's is probably yeah, it could be either one. Her face is in the trees. Yes. And then the husband. Yeah. His face is also and part of it. And it's not like we're just looking at a picture and going, oh, look, there's a face. It matches. It matches a picture, a professional picture taken yeah. of, of them. Mm-hmm. Also, in this, we found dogs, um, mm-hmm. multiple. Dog. And in the book, it does confirm that she was a huge dog lover because yep. in the tour, they only talk about one dog. But she did have dogs about the often. Dog. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we pulled that picture apart, and I'll post it. That picture blew my mind. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm, okay, I'm a medium and I talk to the spirits, but I'm not, I am skeptical of things. I'm still on the, you need to prove to me that this is a spirit. And when I saw that picture and you said, look at this, I instantly knew it was her. There is no denying that that's her. And then going through that picture, almost everybody that was big in her life is represented in there. They're all there. They're all there. Yeah. It It, for me, you know, and this because the society we live in is that, you know, we need to have fact or something tangible 
in order to believe in something. But I always go back to the, well, you know, we breathe air and I can't see right. that. So, but when this popped up, it was, it, man, it just bolted my foundation in this uh-huh. whole belief even more. I was like, yeah, they're there. Oh, yeah. They're all there. Yeah. You know, and I honestly believe one day, you know, we'll be able to, uh, with technology, maybe capture that better. I think so, too. I absolutely do. And But until then, I think we're going to have to keep going out and doing these. I mean, yeah. not that we've done either one of these places as a, a setup for me to talk to spirits. Right. But now that we have done it, I, I'm ready to do more. Yeah, there's other places. I mean, everything's got history. Nothing's it really... It doesn't have to be, yeah. Nothing's like, um, that. like off limits as far as it's too scary or haunted because they're not going to hurt you yeah on any of these things if you go on these ghost tours so to speak it's your own mind that gets you frightened i can Mm. do it to myself very easily i know the spirits aren't going to hurt me but when i'm in a dark house by myself if you don't think that i'm like who's gonna play a joke on me first right because i am (laughs) you know it's just our minds it's how they work Exactly. But if you can go into this kind of thing with an open mind, like I didn't go in there afraid of anything. I just, you know. Oh, I couldn't wait. I was so excited. Yeah. You never know what kind of experience you're going to have. Yeah. For sure. You know, where there's history, there's definitely souls. So, and I yep. think that's kind of the key. Like, you can't go to the mall and feel that same energy. You've got to find places that have been around before you. Right. And I think you'll have a greater chance of um, having those kind of experiences. You can connect with whoever, whenever you want. But if you want those kind of experiences with people, um, which another thing that happened on this trip is outside of Winchester is that we went to, uh, uh, there's Fort Baker, which is right down by the uh, Golden Gate Bridge. Yeah. um, And within that... um, install installation they had which was built back in as early as civil war again and all the way through like world war ii i think it was used a lot might even be still used i don't know but they have a mickey mouse museum that's the walt disney family museum thank you yes and so it was really neat that was a wonderful experience and again an amazing connection uh for samantha um but Got to see a lot of personal things with him, you know. Oh, it was full, amazing! A miniaturized display of Disneyland yep. um, that he used to stand over Old and stare school at. Disneyland, and, yeah. You know, so uh, it was a great. Yeah. That was a great experience too. It was, yeah. I know it meant a lot to you because I've tried to tell her, I think a long time ago when um, she first realized, you know, this gift, and I was like, "Ooh, let's talk to this person. And let's talk to this person." Right. And I think her understanding of it was, well... You have to have a connection. You have to have a connection to it. But in this situation, you do have a connection, but you went to where that person, yes. that person's energy yes. is going to be very prominent. Very prominent. So mm-hmm. when you do that, you're you're increasing your chances right. and then opening that door right. to further communication because maybe... Mr. Walt Disney didn't really know you existed until you walked in there and he was like, well, I got to talk to her. You're leaving out a key part in this is that I did connect to Walt Disney. Yes. That's why I was referring to. Yeah, but you didn't say that. (laughs) Why was referring that you had a great connection to him. Yes. But it was, okay, this is a story I haven't really talked much about because I get emotional. I didn't think that. I didn't go in there thinking I was going to connect to Walt Disney. Right. Not for a second. Right. And all of a sudden, because the way that I know when I'm connected to somebody is I will hear their voice loud and clear. And it was Walt Disney's voice. And I almost started crying. And I was like, what is going on? And I didn't say (laughs) anything to anybody. And I kept going through the museum trying to just be like, okay, it's am I is Walt Disney really in my head right now? Right. But the thing about it is that if if there's anybody and any time that I could talk to anybody, it would have been him. It would be Walt Disney. Yeah. So I still can't talk about it without tearing up. It's a very it was a very very emotional experience for me. Yeah. Maybe one day I won't 
tear up every time I talk about it. Right. But I did learn on this trip that you don't need a direct connection. It does help when you're in their presence type thing like that. Mm-hmm. That was Walt's museum. It was all about his family. I'm sitting there looking at pictures of him as a boy. Mm-hmm. And we were talking about this when we got home from the trip. And you made a perfect valid point that if you're bringing somebody into your subconscious like that, of course you're going to connect to them. You don't have to have a direct connection But I don't know. I'm a new psychic. I'm still learning this stuff. So this was a big trip for me. And I definitely want to do more of these. It became really apparent to me walking through that one is no wonder that that man was so blessed with all the doubt and um, adversity up that he was up against. Yes. With the vision to begin with. Uh When you look at what it stood for to begin with in its purest form, because Walt was the visionary, but he had so many talented people that worked for him that um, he treated them in a way, kind of like I was saying in that managerial way earlier. I think he was a different type of boss. Yes, very much so. He wanted to bring it out of you. He didn't want you to shut you down and keep you down. He wanted to bring the best out of you. Right. So when you see that what he was trying to really create in his purest form was just imagination right was really the the main theme of what he was trying to convey yes what the human can do with our imagination it's no wonder that he has been so blessed and that that still exists today because and people that never met him and right. never will meet him are on that team and behind it yeah. And, you know, for some people, it might be a job, but I'm sure there's a lot of people there that are like Disney fanatics oh, like yeah. <laughs> you, that that's not just a job. I yeah. mean, it's about keeping this thing going. And you look at how many generations this is getting passed over and over and yeah. over to, you know, it's astounding. It's it's mm-hmm. so amazing that he didn't give up. Thank no. you for not giving up. Uh, I can't imagine what this world would be like without Disney. And I'm not even really... You know, a huge Disney freak. I love it. I like to visit it now and then, but it's the idea. Right. It's the idea if you don't give up. Yes. Oh, and, he didn't. And that's, I, and that's, I think, my connection. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really feel he was such an amazing family man. Mm-hmm. And I really feel a very strong connection to him on the fact that he didn't give up on his dreams and I'm not going to give up on mine. So maybe when I can talk a little bit more about it <laughs> without breaking down yeah. in tears. Get old of yourself. I can't. <laughs> I don't know how, but I really would love to talk about it someday soon. Well, maybe we'll do a diff- an episode of it <laughs> yeah, by itself. Yeah, we're out of time anyways. And out of tissue. I don't have any. I have my, my robe here that's... You know. All right. <laughs> Cool. Well, that was a good one. It was. I hope you guys enjoyed it and it wasn't too complicated. If you didn't know, you know, about this, hopefully we explained it well. If you ever have a chance, take the drive. Definitely. Go see it. There's people that listen to us that are all over the world. But if you ever make it out to to California, to the San Francisco Bay Area. San Jose. Yep. Go. go, It's a beautiful town in itself, a little college town, but um, that is where the Winchester house is at. Yep. And it's definitely worth it. And if you're a Disney freak, stop in and say hi to Walt. Yep. Because that was a great one, too. Yep. Yep. Do it. Well, um, before we say goodbye to everybody, do you like to share your page? Sure. You can find anything you need to know about me on my website at samanthajonespsychicmedium.com. And again, I am doing that medium circle on February 8th, if you're interested. The number, again, is at the beginning. But you can also message me. Spiritual Joneses at gmail.com. We'll set it up for you. Cool. Come join us. Nice. Yeah. I look forward to that one. I'm excited because it's been a long time and my abilities are oh, way, grown way, them. way, way better. That's why I look forward <laughs> to that one. It's going to be. I'm probably yeah. going to be in the corner like, what? <laughs> I'm excited. I'm not going to be <laughs> no, that shy. That's little... where Linda's going to be like, I got something to say to you, Danny boy. <laughs> Anyways. And you, sir, <laughs> we're gonna an hour and a half, and we're gonna be like still rambling. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you want to check out my art, you can find me on the web djonesartcollection.com. I'm working on. I'm just about to wrap up my first one of the new year, and I will have this website. I keep saying it, but probably within a month, I would imagine, 
I have about five or six more I have to get photographed so I can post them on the web and then open my store. Yay. I always wanted to do this last one because it's a good one. Yeah. It's important. So check that out. And you can find that, uh, my art page also on at Gypsy, not Gypsy Brown, at D Jones Art Collection <laughs> on <ahead> yourself. <laughs> Instagram and also on Facebook. And if you want to check out our band, Gypsy Brown, also on the web, gypsybrown.com. And at Gypsy Brown Music on Instagram. Yeah. So it looks like uh, a show coming up probably Yay. in about two months, okay. I think. So we'll see. As soon as I know, I'll, I'll share that with everybody. And if who's ever local can make it to the Ventura or L.A. area, we'd love to have you. Yay. And listen. Well, we will definitely let you know when we have a date for that. Yep. But um, we really... Appreciate everybody listening to this episode. Yes, we do. Hope you enjoyed it. Spending the hour with us, and we look forward to next week. And until then, have a great week, and peace and love.